You were made for more. I want you to think about that for a second. You were made for more. You have a story, an experience, an expertise, or an authority that's going to change the world. But you haven't gotten there yet. In fact, neither have I. And the reason why is there's something holding you back. Now, there's two roads to conquer your fear. I was on the phone yesterday with a good friend of mine who was recording her first video to put online. And I said, look, there's two ways to accomplish this. Number one, you can read a book about procrastination. You can study procrastination. You can make a list of all the things that you want to accomplish. And then you can dutifully make an accountability plan to accomplish every single one of those things. Or you can press record and create your video. You have two choices in life. You can think about it or you can take action. And my guest today on the Bunker Bash is a man who has known all of his life about taking action. I'm gonna introduce Mark Pattison in just a second. But before I do that, I wanna welcome you to the Bunker Bash. Listen, this is a positive place full of insanely implementable ideas. We stream every single day, Monday through Friday, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific and one o'clock Eastern. Next week, I have some of the best experts in the world on things like social media, podcasting, LinkedIn, and writing books. But this week, I'm interviewing a man who I classify as a pure machine. So roll up your sleeves, get ready to take some notes, and by all means, log into chat and say hello. Listen, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, YouTube, you're off to the right-hand side, just log in, tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you do. I'll be saying hello to you in chat in just a moment. And if you're on Facebook, that's right below you in the comment section. Please just tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Now, in a moment, I'm gonna introduce my guest, and I'm going to do that by playing a video. So please direct your attention to the screens, and then I'm gonna introduce Mark Pattison. I love being in the mountains for all the serenity and the peace, and really being able to clear your mind in the right way. And the best thing about it is you don't get hit by 250 pound linebackers. <laughs> I got drafted by the Los Angeles Raiders, and uh, I can remember going down to our first uh, spring training. Jim Plunkett was the quarterback, Marcus Allen was the running back. No. difficult time separation with my wife and it was just a very lonely place and so I kept asking the question how did I get here and one day I changed that mindset to what am I going to do about it I decided to become the first NFL player to climb the seven summits the seven summits are the seven highest peaks on each continent I did the first one then became the second then the third and then some momentum started to happen and next thing I know, I'm more than halfway there and I've got three to go, which are Denali, uh, Mount Everest, and Vincent. I got pushed back on Denali in Alaska last year. We ran into minus 60 degree temperatures on top. And so my life and limb and fingers and toes were more important. So I'm gonna go back again next May and attempt that mountain. I, need minus 60 I get butterflies when I first get to the mountain, just like it did in the NFL. You get up in front of a mountain and it's pretty intimidating. You know, it's staring down at you and there's got a lot of dangers up there and you don't know exactly what you're getting into. But as soon as you start taking that first step, then all the flies go away and you're ready to go. The whole thing with all of us that we need to do, those guys that played in the NFL, is to go out and just rechannel that same effort, that same energy into finding something that you're really purposeful about. Those things that are going to get you out of bed in the morning. And I'm so glad the mountains have done that for me.
All right. Mark Pattison, can you hear me okay, my friend? All right. I got you loud. I can. Listen, How you doing? A little bit. There he is. All right, cool. We had a little bit of a, uh, a video hiccup, but you know what? That happens when you go live. And sometimes the wind comes in at 16 miles an hour, and sometimes the temperature drops uh, to negative 60. So I want to introduce my friend, Mark Pattison, and then we're going to get rocking and rolling. By the way, welcome to everybody who just joined us in chat. We're going to be taking your, your questions also. So dial it in today. Listen, Mark Pattison is a machine. This is a guy uh, who's, who is an NFL veteran uh, who left uh, the NFL and decided that he wanted to conquer the seven highest peaks on the seven continents in the world. He's knocked out six so far. In fact, he was on his way to Everest just yesterday uh, when um, the world shut down a couple weeks ago. And so he's at home in LA. By the way, one of the things you didn't hear in that video, Mark is also the senior vice president for business development of a small little magazine called Sports Illustrated. Mark Pattison, welcome to the bunker bash, my friend. Yeah, thank you so much. Love it. Thank you. And sorry for the interruption. I'm not sure what happened, but internet is what it is. I think, you know, there's such a huge surge of people staying at home right now with the, the virus that uh, just causing a lot of outages and shortages. And I've seen that on Zoom on a number of different times that we've been trying to connect. Every time, every time we're about to have a major breakthrough in life, there's always an obstacle. And sometimes that's your internet connection. So, uh, so Mark, take me back. I want I want to hear your story. It's it's incredible. I was thinking about you this morning, and I thought I figured Mark probably sleeps about an hour a night. I don't uh, know. Uh, with all the work that you do, plus all the training that you do. So, tell me your story. How did you decide to when you got out of the NFL? How did you decide to do what you did? And and take us down that road. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to welcome everybody to the show today that's out there that's listening to this. I really appreciate you coming in and listening to, to my story. And I think my story is really metaphorical for everybody that's out there trying to accomplish something or they feel stuck. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of people out there right now that are going through a tough time um, with all the layoffs and job shutdown and uncertainty. And um, you know, to me, it's never been a better time to really unleash that and try to figure out how you're going to get to that next level. Um, for me, um, I did uh, grow up in Seattle, Washington, very mountainous community, and uh, you know my sport was football, and I was able and very fortunate to get the scholarship to the University of Washington. And at that point, um, you know, I really had to grind through. And I never, I'll never forget um, that first day when I came out at camp, and I'd done really well in high school, but I'd never worked for it. And um, and so I'm standing there in August, we're opening training camp and I'm, I'm, I'm standing there, I'm 181 pounds, could not bench my weight. And I'm looking out on the field and I'm seeing all these big, strong, you know, geeked out guys, confident. And I just looked at myself and I said, you know what, that is not me. And I went through a lot of trials and tribulations and it really set in motion, like what I, do I want my life to look like? And I knew that the current path that I've been on, which is kind of happy-go-lucky and just show up was not going to work. It was not going to get me to that end point. And so we had a coach up there at the time, Don James. He later would become this uh, Hall of Fame coach that really showed me the path and really showed me this thing called um, uh, the pyramid of success. It's something that John Wooden, the famous basketball coach at UCLA, had, had come up with and created. And so what it really taught me to do is, is work hard and do the, 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 the 25 different things that somebody needs to do to get ahead um, their individual and team blocks. And the very top is uh, at the pinnacle is a championship. But the, 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 the name that he has in there is competitive greatness. And so after you go all through the team things and you lift and you get stronger and you, you do the things that you need to do in the, in the weight room and the, in the, uh, the film room um, is competitive greatness. And what that really means is that nothing happens overnight. And that's what I've learned in my life. I've been up and I've been down just like a mountain. You go peaks and valleys. And it's been a challenge, you know, and and uh, so the video that you guys just saw or maybe saw half of it, um, you know, it was really something the the NFL had put together. And it was really a, a, a compilation of what I'd accomplished as of about two years ago. And about eight years ago, I was going through a tough time and uh, I was going through a divorce that I didn't want. It was hard. It was painful. Um, and at the end of the day, um, um, I, I decided like, you know what? I don't want to be stuck anymore. I don't thrive well when I'm just sitting, not doing anything. And so I decided to do something about that. Um, I was walking around the block with my chocolate lab. I've, I've talked about the story a few different times. And what came out of it was, you know what? I've got to do something that is not just 
something average. I want to do something great. I knew I couldn't go back and play in the NFL. So I, I growing up in Seattle, there was a lot of famous mountaineers that had come out. We have a crown jewel up there called Mount Rainier. It's about 14,500 feet. And, um, and so I decided to become the first NFL player to ever climb the seven summits. And that really put me on a path towards um, accomplishment, towards pulling myself out of the hole that I was in, um, towards really taking that, uh, that first step in front of the other to start climbing up that mountain and really realizing my, my potential in life that I could share. And a lot of amazing things have come out of it. So when that video was shot, um, I think it was just after I had got back, I would got pushed back in 2017 on Denali. Denali is the biggest, uh, tallest mountain in uh, North America. We were up there at uh, and stuck at 14,500 feet. It was, I think they call it Camp 3, Camp 2 or 3. And uh, it was minus 40 every single night. If you can imagine that, minus 40. And oh. I didn't, yeah, and I didn't think it, you know, much was going to come from that. And then, Ed, I, I, I got pushed back. I had to go all the way back home. And the bitch about all that was that <laughs> navigating through um, severe and crazy crevasses, avalanche coming down left and right, um, huge snowstorms that would come and, and blow things apart, um, you know, like in four hours, 12 inches. It was, it was really crazy. But on top, it was minus 80. So we decided to call it. I had to come back the following year in 2018. I did um, and was able to climb the mountain successfully. Um, and, and then uh, last year, 2019, the beginning in January, I was down in, in Antarctica, which is a crazy place to be. And, uh, and then, you know, all set and geared up. I live actually in Sun Valley, Idaho, and going up and down the mountain every single day. I was all set to go take on Mount Everest, and we got pushed back. The whole world shut down. So here we are. But um, Ed, we'll get into this, uh, but that's kind of the tip of the iceberg of of kind of where I, I I was, how I went through it. I really learned this whole thing about about goal setting and what that can do, but also talking about a stretch and really pushing you along and having a what they call a BHAG, big hairy audacious yeah. goal, right, to really push you out there and 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 go for it. And there's been all these magical things that have happened in between when I thought it was at the end of the world eight years ago to where I sit today. Yeah, I mean, the thing about having a big goal is you can't accomplish it this afternoon, you know? So so you do cut your goals down into smaller, more accomplishable bits. In a moment, I'm gonna ask you about your morning routine because you 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 jumped off just before we were going live to go get your tea. Uh, but let's jump into the topic really of the day, which is overcoming fear. So it's negative 60 degrees. The wind's blowing at 60 miles an hour on the top of the peak. Death is truly imminent. These mountains have claimed uh, thousands of lives. Yeah. Get, what was the scariest part about it, about any of the climbs, and how did you overcome it? Well, I, I, you know, really, to me, it's about stepping into the fear, not going around it, right? And, and so when you start talking about big goals that are out there, whether it's business, uh, whether it's about a physical goal that you're going after, whether it's something else, I think doing something that's really uncomfortable for you is really the thing that you need to do to go jump into to give you that push. And, um, you know, on, on Denali, for example, you know, that is a wicked mountain. It's claimed a lot of lives. It gets very cold up there. Um, you have all this Arctic blast coming off from the Barren Sea. You know, obviously we sit between Alaska and Russia. Siberia, and it, it can get really crazy up there, and the weather is very, very, very unpredictable. Um, but I think you know, like all things, the question really becomes about um, let's 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 leapfrog to to Mount Everest. Um, generally speaking, there's about a three percent um, rate of people who don't make it every single year. So you have X amount of climbers that go up, and of all the all the you know the climbers that attack that mountain, three percent. Um, uh, pass away. My my tent mate last year from Antarctica was one of those, um, and and you know to me then it, it, it gets back down to when I was 18 years old. I was standing on that football field, and I realized I was so far in over my head. The question was, what was I going to do about it? And and really understanding and learning that preparation preparation meets opportunity, and I think that is the whole key in everything that we do. And so the more preparation you go into something. 
Um, and the longer that you do at it and realize that things don't happen overnight. And sometimes you may not realize your greatness for 10, 20 years, but you look back on it and there's all the small things that you did are the things that can help you really attack that fear, step into it by doing those things to prepare yourself to put yourself in the best spot. Yeah, I mean, I want to pause for a moment on this one's uh, phrase that you've used three times, by the way, step into it. We're going to go a little bit deeper on that. Before we do that, I just want to say hello to you in chat. Uh, thank you for joining us, by the way. It's an absolute honor uh, to be here with you. It's an honor to be here also, Mark, with you. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity, uh, please do introduce yourself either below or on the right-hand side. I just want to say hello to some of our friends, uh, to Dennis Bauer, who said, you don't conquer the mountain. You conquer yourself, uh, Jim Whitaker, the first American to summit uh, Everest. Uh, welcome, uh, Sally. Hello from sunny Arizona, she says. Uh, welcome, uh, Jew. Frank Aragon, good to see you, buddy. Uh, welcome back. Uh, Frank's no stranger to fear. Uh, he's been in law enforcement for years. Hello, Charles, uh, back from Bozeman. Uh, hey, Judy, welcome. I'm glad you're here uh, from BC. Um, Donna, welcome. I'm glad you're on the show. And Gina, uh, from uh, jolly old England. Hello, Melissa from Texas. Good to see you. Welcome back. Hello, Bob Moore, uh, the effectiveness coach from North Carolina and Diana and Aaron Miller, a state planning attorney from Dallas, Texas. My man, I hope business is good actually for you. People are thinking about their estate planning. Uh, Denise, hello. Welcome back. Wendell Bugs, my man. Good to see you. John Teague and Dr. Tom Ashton from Florida. Hello, Mike Semmel. Good to see you too. Uh, and the barber says, which I'm pretty sure um, is Kevin. Uh, John, welcome back. Matt, hello, good to see you. And Jim Butts, my man from Carlsbad, California. Thank you so much for joining us. So, hey, Ed, Ed, let me add, let me let me just throw one thing. I want to say shout out to a couple of people, Kimberly yeah. and David and some of these other people I see on here. This is really amazing. Um, I want to uh, go back and have a a, uh, a quick comment on Dennis's, um, you don't conquer the mountain, you conquer yeah. yourself, Jim Whitaker. Um, so he has a twin brother, Lou. Lou started a program up at uh, Mount Rainier um, called RMI. And so essentially they were the first uh, climbing outfitter group that started on Mount Rainier and then spread that uh, throughout the world doing the seven summits. And I am very fortunate to meet his, his brother. He's 90 years old now. Lou, I was in a bar a couple of years ago in Sun Valley and I saw him walk by me. Uh, I was in this small crowded restaurant. And when he came by me, I thought I just saw... Uh, Paul McCartney. I mean, it was like an, an incredible moment for me because this is the guy I grew up with in Seattle. So I turn around and I and I and I run after him, and I grab him. He sp he spins around and takes a step back. I give him my thirty seconds, like who I am, what I'm doing, what I'm I'm doing. He he looks me up. He looks me down. He starts like shoving me in the in in the shoulders and pushing me around. This guy was ninety years old and he was built like a brick. And I just loved his enthusiasm for life of getting after it. And just because you hit a certain age does not mean that you just shut it off, right? And I said, I want to be that guy. I looked at him as my inspiration towards something that I wanted to be. And I literally moved my whole life. I was living in, in LA at the time. And I, I decided, you know what? I'm moving to Sun Valley because I want my life to mirror an image the way he lives his life today. So just a little, little funny story that uh, Dennis, you know, brought up about his brother, Jim, who was the first American to climb uh, Mount Everest. And those guys have both been an inspiration to me for a long time. It's amazing. I mean, what you can do with your mind, they interviewed the longest living man in history. It was a, a Japanese man who went into his uh, hundred and teens. And when they interviewed him, you know, still spry and still moving around in his hundred and teens. And they said, what's the secret? You know, what's the secret to living long? They thought that he was going to mention nutrition or exercise or lifestyle. And he said, I, I never said, I never once in my life said I'm tired. <laughs> so. Well, I, th I think that the answer to that is purpose. Yeah. I, I, I think when too many, you know, they talk about this retirement age at 65 or whatever number you want or retiring and doing, you know, whatever. But, you know, this whole experience for me has really led me to I'm just starting. I mean, this is the beginning of my path. A lot of people have said, Mark, you're about to do your seventh mountain. Is that it? I'm like, no. I mean, there's so many things that I haven't done on the planet that has really opened my eyes towards um, towards going after things that I might be scared to do. You know, it could be um, scuba diving or something, right? Uh, I mean, everybody's got their own thing. And I just think there's so many more things that I haven't done versus that I have done that just opens up the world of possibilities. And 
you know, I'm 58 years old now. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I feel like I'm in my thirties and, 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 and I think a lot of that is mindset on the way I want my day, my week, my month and my year and my accomplishments to look at. Yeah. I mean, the purpose thing is huge. So one of the things I wrote about in my book, 21 day miracle is finding essentially an impossible goal. Uh, when you, when you target impossible goals, the neat thing about it is it expands your mind, you know, much like a, on like a major league baseball player. I was a college uh, ball player. We used to swing uh, these heavy bats, you know, and when you walked up to the plate, the bat felt lighter, not because the molecular structure of the bat changed, but because you trained yourself to a higher level. When you set these huge goals, it expands your mind and it changes what's, what's possible and what you can do. And so as you're watching, I mean, really take, take, take this example and try to find something that's so big that it's outside of the scope of what you can accomplish on your own so that when you finally do it, you'll know that it's because of God and the community of your peers and your friends that you were able to do it. But Mark, you said step into it. So when we're talking about fear, there's really two ways to go about it. There's one way where you step backwards and allow that fear to control or manipulate you. And the other one is to frankly, just step right into it. And it seems to me that when you do that, you find out that the fear wasn't all that important after all. Well, boy, you, you got that right. Uh, I, you know, I, I think there's a lot of things that you can do to 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 get to that point. And again, you just don't go from Little League to the NFL. You don't go from little mountains or trails or hikes around California to the biggest mountains in the world. You know, there's a process and you have to go through the process. And I think one of the things that sometimes um, if, if there are any compliments, you know, coming in my direction, um, the only difference between myself and a lot of others is just that I don't quit. I never flip and quit. Now, I'm not talking about when it's too dangerous that I'm going to lose my, my fingers and toes in my life. I've got too many important people to come back to. Um, but I'm talking about, about doing the small things every day, every day, every day. I mean, this what I'm doing with you right now comes up once in a blue moon. Um, and, and But majority of the time, the cameras... Uh, and all those types of things, they're not out me on, with me on the trail every single day. But you got to have a commitment to excellence and a commitment of daily discipline to get to that side, whatever you're trying to do. Take me from, this is a perfect maneuver through three things, by the way. So we're t we talked about fear and then stepping into it. We talked about purpose and having this big, huge, hairy, audacious goal that you can have purpose. And then the next part is the, is the daily activity that gets you literally one step closer uh, to your purpose. So those three things, we're, we're on to the third one now. Talk about what does it take to accomplish? I mean, you're, you're on your way to Everest. That's a mountain that's, that's, that's probably claimed as many lives as, a, as attempts. So, so you would be there right now, actually. Wouldn't you be in Nepal right now if it wasn't for this world? Uh, I was. I was supposed to land right now. Uh, and, and so, you know, I mean, like, look, it, it like it, it I, I always look at everything. I mean, you can show up at 50, 75 or hundred percent. That's your choice, right? It's, there's not that many, th I can't, I can't change my, my, my body, my height, my weight. Um, but I can always change your attitude. And there's this former teammate of mine for the Raiders, Jerry Robinson. Uh, he was an all pro amazing player. And I talked to him on a podcast I held, have called finding your summit. And I said to Jerry, I go, Jerry, you know, how you doing? He goes, you know what? Every single day I wake up with an attitude of gratitude. And I think that's half the battle of what you want to do in terms of where you want to go. You know, my, um, I want to drop another name because this, this, th I said this before, but I want to say it in a different way. Um, so going back to when I was in the NFL, I was playing for the New Orleans Saints and our head coach, Jim Mora, was up there talking. And, and for 20 years, if you can imagine this, for 20 years of going through losing seasons, never won, never won winning season. And the year I get there, 1987, we're on fire. Um, it wasn't because of me, but because of the collective effort of the team, the players that they brought in. And I just happened to be along for the ride. And, and we got into about week nine. We hadn't lost a game. They'd never had that happen. This town was going berserk down in New Orleans. And he wanted to talk about, this is Jim Moore, he wanted to talk about luck. And he said, you know, everybody right now is calling us lucky. And, um, and, and then he went on to say, luck is what happens when preparation, again, meets opportunity. So let's take today. 
Like right now on the planet, um, it's all upside down, right? And people are losing their jobs and the stock, mar stock market is crashing. But I see it really as an opportunity, an opportunity to figure out what you can do to prepare yourself that when we come out of the thing, which we will, we've had this thing happen to us now three or four times in the history of the planet and every single time. And what can you do to prepare yourself, to put yourself in the best possible position to do whatever you're trying to do or accomplish in life? It might be learning, might be getting on online, figuring something out. Obviously, there's all this social distancing going on. But just like Mount Everest, you know, I was massively disappointed, which would be understandable because I had prepared. I mean, I'd, the last three months, my vertical climbing in some valley, I live at 6,000 feet. But every morning I run up and down you know, top of the mountain, you know, I put in like 120,000 vertical feet. It was insane. And having to reset and do all that again. But what a great opportunity to get back out there and get my put myself in even a better place where I can go and I can attack the mountain and put myself in the best possible position to actually make it. Yeah, I mean, it's what we've been focusing on here in the Bunker Bash for the last two weeks, which is, look, there's two ways to go. You can sit in Netflix and chill for the next two months or however long we're going to be sitting in here, or you can flat out get better. Uh, and essentially, 80, every, every 80 years in the United States, we have a massive crisis that changes everything. And when it changes, uh, there's people who come out on top and there's people who come out on the bottom. And you might as well be the person, as you're watching this right now, you might as well be the person that comes out on top. So, so let me let me let me throw some in that if I could. So there's something by uh, could be Gilbert. I mean, the hardest thing is not to go from the bottom uh, to the top of the mountain. The hardest thing is getting from the the couch. couch. Yeah, you see all that. Okay, so it's right below us. The hardest thing is not to go from the bottom to the top of the mountain. The hardest thing is to go from the couch, the couch to the mountain. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is this: is that you know, I, I think when we start talking about finding your summit, it's really about through life, it's finding your summits. This is not one thing. You know, I've been fortunate to have some different successes, but I've had a lot of failures too. And it, it's when, when you start talking about the mountains, the mountains are only metaphorical, right? So what is your summit? Um, like, and, and you have to align that a little bit with what your interests are. And something else, Ed, that I think is really important to talk about here is about action creates reaction, right? So too many people sit around on the couch and think about what they like, what they don't like, but you'd never know if you don't step into it. So that's part of stepping in the fear. And for me, like I'm not a great swimmer. I mean, I can swim, but I'm not going to go climb, swim the English channel. You know, that's just not my sweet spot and that's not where I should be. Um, and so for me trying to swim from Cuba to Florida or something like that would probably not be something that I, I would need to do. I don't really have an interest in it, but, but, you know, you got to try and you got to put yourself out there because you'll you'll find out pre pretty quickly whether or not is this is a passion of yours or not. And that's all part of just trying to figure out your why and what your purpose is going to be. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to swim from Florida to Cuba to Florida, but you definitely don't want to swim from Florida to Cuba. So <laughs> um, let's go. Let's go into your morning routine. This is interesting because we were chatting about this just before we came on. And every successful person I know has some kind of morning routine. Now, it might change from time to time and location to location, but how do you get yourself up and get moving? It sounds like you've got a, a morning plan that you do that's pretty robust. Yeah, so generally speaking, what I do, and this is more like when I'm in some valley and I had I, driven, I'd packed my car full of all my mountaineering gear and I'd driven out to California, to see my daughters and then uh, fly out from LAX. And so then this whole world got shut down. But generally speaking, what I like to do is get up early in the morning, and I call it an FOF because I think a lot of times that's the hardest part of the day and going to do something that you really maybe don't want to do because that comforter is pulled up, you know, right underneath your chin. And it's just it's dark out and it's cold and everything else. But the best thing you can do is do that. So I call it an FOF, feet on floor. So the hardest thing is setting an alarm, getting up, putting your feet on the floor, brushing your teeth. I take a breath of air and then I'm out the door to the gym and I, I, I do my CrossFit. Now I, I'm not doing CrossFit in a gym right now because they're all shut down. So I'm out down on the beach running um, every single day. And then I work, you know, throughout the day. Uh, I'm an executive for Sports Illustrated, very fortunate um, with that. And then at the end of the day, around four o'clock, I'll go and I'll run up the mountain. Um, uh, I actually like to skin, which is putting uh, this sandpaper type material on the bottom of your skis and then skinning up the mountain and then taking those off and skiing down. Um, during the summer, I'm, I'm mountain biking and I climb and this stuff. But 
it's just really important to me that like exercise for me um, fuels my life. And I think, you know, whether you work out once a day or twice a day or whether you're doing yoga or some kind of meditation, I think it all matters. And it just puts you in the right kind of mindset to start things off. It gets all the pistons firing in your brain to really do the things that you want to do. And I don't, not one time, even though at the beginning of the workout where I'm sluggish and I don't really want to do it, have I come back after it and said, I wish I hadn't gone and worked out. I always feel better about myself. And that puts me on the right trajectory for the day. Yeah, isn't that true? So wherever you're at and wherever you are, look, you, you may be, and I'm going to ask you about this actually in a second, but you may be, you may be looking and, and go, okay, well, fine, Ed, like I wasn't in the NFL. So, uh, so life is different for me, but wherever you are, the first step is massively important. The first hour is massively important. And the truth is life does happen sometimes. Like for example, this morning I was on my way to work out this morning, which I eventually did. My wife wasn't feeling good. And I have a one-year-old, which meant I spent the first hour with the one-year-old, which is a like shift of gears. That's fine. Sometimes the enemy maneuvers and you maneuver back. And by the way, that's, <laughs> that's not me saying that anyone in my house is the enemy. I'm just talking about the world at work. Um, but that's just the way it is. And so life, life adjust. So Mark, We've got, uh, by the way, I want to just catch up on a couple of, of you that said some really amazing things in chats. So thank you. Uh, Gina, I love this. Gina says, among other things, I want to run the London Marathon. And I'm not a distance runner, but she wants to do it wearing a German Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> Gina That's got awesome. uh, two that I know of German Shepherds that she traveled the country with. So um, so I like that. We might address that, by the way, Gina. John Roney said, same with running. The hardest thing to do is tie your shoes. David Zetz, my man, he's a basketball referee. Uh, originally came to me from uh, my dad, who's a, a real well-known basketball referee. Better, faster, stronger. So I like that. Good morning, Barry Gamir, uh, <laughs> Professor Ed Rush. I like that. Uh, and thanks, John, for your comments. So uh, keep um, them coming. In a moment, Mark and I are going to take your questions. And what I mean by that is Mark's going to take your questions because you get me every day, uh, but you don't get Mark every single day. So uh, we'll open up questions. If you have a question, uh, and you've been here before, you know the way to format it, please just type the word question before your question so that my team knows to highlight that as a question and we can uh, bring that before uh, Mark and we can flat out get it done. All right, so Mark, what's your answer to the question, you know, hey, uh, I get it. I need to be more disciplined. I need to wake up. I need to work out. But Mark, you're an NFL player who's now the senior vice president of Sports Illustrated and you're climbing all these mountains. Like, I'm not you. What do, what do you say to somebody who, who says that? It doesn't matter. I mean, the the, the guys in, in the NFL, right? And, and, and let me be really clear. I was just a guy. I mean, I played five years in the NFL. I was never a star player. I was cut. I was brought back. I was traded. I mean, everything happened to me. But somehow or another, I made it into the club. But it doesn't have to be that. Everybody's born with some talent. And that just happened to be mine. And I can tell you this is that there's nobody that worked harder than, than me that was out there running the stadium stats. Again, I grew up in Seattle, Washington. It was always raining on me. Um, and there was a lot of miserable nights that that I was out there without the lights on, right? And and I had a lot of dark days when I was at the University of Washington trying to get me over the hump. I just don't think, you know, you need to be that magical. I mean, I'm the only former NFL guy that works at uh, Sports Illustrated. Everybody else went to these top journalism schools, Columbia and all these other ones that I could never in a million years get into. Um, but um, I work on the digital side of S Sports Illustrated because, again, going back to what I said earlier, I took the time about 15 years ago to really immerse myself in digital and understand that space and really see where all this was going that I really wanted to immerse myself and put myself, again, in the best position to be hired just in case something ever turned. And it, it was literally a, a Hail Mary. So over the helicopter was above me. But it was literally a Hail Mary how we came a, a, a across um, uh, taking over Sports Illustrated back in October. And um, that's a whole nother story into it. But it, the theme is the same, which is we put ourselves in the best position to, be, uh, to, to go to the company that did buy the company, ABG, and, and become the operators of that company and be the technology behind it. But it's because collectively as a team that we came together, we had this experience that we've been doing for years and years and years that we were able to do that. And now on the mountains on that side, 
I mean, anybody can go climb a mountain. I mean, literally put on some shoes and walk out the door. It's that easy. And all the, 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 the climbers, the mountaineers that I'm with um, all over the world, when I land in Argentina in Australia and and in, in Russia and down in Antarctica and these other places, I, you know, I've never met any one of them. I always go by myself. And when I land, I'm there and they're, you know, they're software engineers and they're, they're guys and say stuff, but they have been working on the craft. Not everybody does that, but most of the people that I climb with have been working on this craft to put themselves in that position. It's, it's, it's truly, truly accessible. And again, as Mark's sharing his expertise at climbing, we're going to change this into the business in just a second. I just want you to look right at yourself for a moment and figure it out. What is the goal? What's the mission? Y'all have heard me. My mission is to change the way we lead as a nation, uh, to raise up 400 leaders to move into Washington and totally take over. That's a big goal, but there's small steps to take to that goal. What's your big goal? And then what's the next step for you to take to get there? And by the way, fully transparently, this show that we're doing right now is my next step. Just to be Fully, I, look, there's nothing, you know the way, you, you know, I'll tell you everything. So, by the way, I'll pause real quick. If you just joined us, you're watching The Bunker Bash. My name is Ed Rush, former F-18 fighter pilot, five-time number one best-selling author. Your host every day, every weekday uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern, for the most positive place on the planet for implementable ideas. And uh, we have an amazing community here. I'd love for you to join us. If this interview has been interesting and helpful, and I guarantee it has, Click the button below you that says like. That tells YouTube and Facebook uh, to get the information out to everyone. So that would be an incredible honor if you would just consider doing that. If you haven't logged into chat and said hello and comment yet, it's your time to do that as well. I am interviewing Mark Pattison. He's a senior vice president for business development at a small little magazine called Sports Illustrated. You've probably heard of it before. He's also climbed six of the seven highest summits in the world. He's also a former NFL player and a great guy. So, Mark, take us to your transition from the NFL world or the climbing world into business because the folks watching right now, we're business folks, man. We're changing the world out there uh, in the business world, and you've done some really interesting stuff on the acquisition side, on the leadership side. How did the principles that you learned from the football field but also the summit transition into the business world? Good question. So after I got done playing, I was around 29 years old and um, I had no clue what to do. Imagine doing something that you love more than anything else in the world. Um, you got paid well, you're in front of, you know, thousands and millions of people and, you know, you're glorified um, gladiator really at the end of the day. And, and then you go from there and you drop off the cliff and it was really difficult. It was really hard. And so I probably took about two years to try to try to figure it out. And um, I, I ultimately ended up being a um, or in the marketing world, and that then led to the transition of starting an import export. And as all things um, would have it, I had heard about an opportunity um, with Starbucks uh, growing up in Seattle. They're a Seattle based company, and they were looking for a new manufacturer to create all the green market umbrellas that you see outside of Starbucks. And so I, I called up uh, Starbucks and I, I, I said, who's the person in charge? And they said it was XYZ person. Um, I reached out to that person and I said, hi, this is Mark and I'm your expert. I'm your go-to guy to create these things. I had no idea what an outdoor market umbrella was. And then that led to me getting the gig after two and a half years of hanging in there to ultimately produce every single green umbrella in North America, South American parts of Asia for 14 years. And, you know, it did become very lucrative. But, you know, again, it's one of those things that I had no clue what I was doing. I had no clue what a market umbrella was. That led to other deals with other companies. Um, and that led to other business ventures that I got into. But the thing that you said at the very, very beginning of this show was about we were talking about stepping into the fear and really immersing yourself into something. If you don't know it, you can't figure it out by reading a book. I think you brought that up. Um, it, it's really like go figure it out and use the power of curiosity to elevate you to that next level. I just was laughing. So you had no idea, you had no clue about outdoor marketing or umbrellas, but you made the phone call. <laughs> so it was awesome. This it was pause for a second. This is this is as big of a success tip as anything that that Mark shared so far. 
If you want to be influential in a marketplace, make the phone call. Because here's the thing. If you get the phone call, you can figure out the umbrellas. You can figure out the marketing. You can figure everything out. Make the phone call first. Because most people spend two years figuring out the outdoor umbrella thing. And by then, the whole market's passed them by. So that's that's hysterically awesome, by the way. Thank you for that. <laughs> Yeah, well, it happened. It was it was it was crazy. But in a, again, it it goes back to the period, uh, the 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 mindset and and of not giving up. I mean, I had to call on her for two and a half flipping years. Think about that. And the thing, if you're in sales, you got to understand this: is that you know, typically it takes nine times before you get through when you're trying to get something done. You're trying to break a new new client, um, and it's it's that persistence, daily discipline. Of putting somebody on the on the calendar, not being abusive by the way that you're following up, but you know it it, it, it most of the times it, it it does take around five or six or seven times before that person answers your call back, and most people give up after the first or second call. And to me, you know, the game is just beginning around call five when everybody else is dropping off, and it goes back to the same flipping thing I was saying before about getting up, getting after it, and uh, uh, this whole uh, notion of having daily discipline about what your life wants to be and not quitting, not giving up, staying at it. And every once in a while, like Sports Illustrated, like Starbucks Coffee, like many other companies I've been able to penetrate, you know, you get lucky, but luck happens because you put yourself there in the right position. Yeah, I mean, you said earlier, I think it was a Vince Lombardi quote originally, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. As you're watching this, though, I want you to remember what Mark just said there. Five, six, seven calls. Most business owners don't make the call. But if they do make the call, literally, it's one sort of like a sort of tossed attempt and then back away. But here's the thing. They might not even have gotten the call. And, and trust me, they're probably, they're probably not you know, saying no to you. They're, they're, just, they're just busy. But I will tell you, from personal experience, because I have people who, I have plenty of people who are trying to offer me stuff. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, look, there was a guy who every single month for a year emailed me every month to see if he could help me on my Facebook page. Every month, I admire that tenacity. That's not annoying, that's tenacity. Yeah. So I absolutely love it. Um, there, there's, a, I wanna say another thing too, and we, I, wanna, I wanna enter uh, another subject here is, you know, I, I think one of the key things and, and a lot of things that we do in life is, and this is something that I had to learn in my life. I'm 58 years old now, but this, I didn't figure this out till I was around 50 really. And that is taking those timeouts and really making sure that where you're going is on the right path. And so again, you call it meditation. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but what I've found is that when you're in the mountains, you know, you're not just constantly 24 hours a day marching up a mountain. A lot of times you'll march up and then you come back down because you're acclimating, and then you'll have a rest day, and then you go a little bit higher, then you come down, and you're carrying gear and all these things. And so there can be a lot of downtime, and I found that that downtime really beneficial. Um, number one, your cell phone doesn't work, so you shut off that noise. But number two, really writing down my thoughts. Now, I'm showing you this, this book I have. It's not for sale. It's not out there. It's just something that, that I wrote um, and collaborated with somebody else, and it's just it's a it's a finding your summit playbook, a step by step guide to help me unleash my potential, achieve my goals, and live my purpose. Right, and it 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 really has helped me in terms of keeping me on on course. Now you can take, you know, you can come up with a little self published book like that. Again, it's not for sale. I'm not promoting it, um, or a little journal, right, that you have. But it's writing down where you want to go. Um, it, it's just studies have shown. Like 95% of the things that you write down, you'll accomplish versus if you just have them in your head, poof, they go away. You're not going to get there. Yeah. I mean, and the other thing that's amazing about writing, we could go into journaling too. And by the way, I'm going to pause real quick and just say, uh, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush, former F-18 pilot. I'm here with Mark Pattison, my friend, uh, former NFL football player, climbed six of the seven highest summits, is on his way to Everest, I think next year actually now. Uh, and the Senior Vice President at Sports Illustrated. This is a show called The Bunker Bash. We are live five days a week, uh, 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern. It's the most positive place on the planet. Uh, Mark, we're going to take some questions uh, here in just a second. Cool. Uh, and I've got several of those. <laughs> what Dennis, by the way, just said, one of those green Starbucks umbrellas is a story in my keynote. So <laughs> 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 now you know. Now you know. Yeah. Uh, 
now you know. And you know what? There's not a lot of people underneath those umbrellas right now, but there will be again. Um, so a couple of questions that just came in, and I thought uh, this was, um, these were really, really good questions. And by the way, um, Mark, we've got about 10 minutes left, so we'll take a few questions. And then if you've got any place you want to send people to learn more about you, I've got your website pulled up. Uh, that I can show people if that's the place, but let me know where you want people to go to learn more about you because I, I know you've got a pretty big following online and I, I'd love to just be able to send people to you as well. You're a speaker and uh, and a motivator, motivator, so it'd be awesome to have, have my folks following you as well. So Yeah, no, um, I appreciate that. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, and, you know, and I know you're not closing things out right now, but it's markpattisonnfl.com, super simple, markpattisonnfl.com and all my social uh channels are up there that you can connect with me. I love engaging with people. I answer every single email or comment. Um, and the other thing too, I think, and this isn't about me, but my, my podcast, Finding Your Summit, all about people overcoming adversity and finding their way, that has probably been one of the greatest gifts to me because all these things, I thought I had my issues and it's nothing compared to the guys with you know, no arms, no legs, climbing up mountains, blind, going down the Colorado River, been burned, you know, like 90% of their body, uh, uh, stage four burn. I mean, insane stories. Like I'm like, you gotta be kidding. And, and if anybody wants to hear those inspirational stories, cause if you're stuck, um, it, it helps put perspective, uh, to your situation because you might be saying, you know, at least I don't have that. Thank God. And, 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 and it allows you to like press forward and do great things in your life. Let's do that really quickly. I just want to, um, click over just, just cause we were talking about it. Mark, I was, um, I was uh, checking out your podcast, and I got to tell you, there are some absolutely amazing guests on this show. Um, and so, when you go over to Mark Pattison, that's P A T T I S O N, by the way, uh, when you go over to Mark Pattison NFL, uh, you'll get to see uh, not only a little bit more about Mark, some of his videos, but also um, his podcast guest, and and it's incredibly impressive. Uh, number one, and there's some people on there that are some pretty heavy hitters. So I saw Ronnie Lott's interview, yeah. uh, former NFL player, really well-known player. Uh, there's a guy that Mark interviewed called Conrad An Anker, who is one of the most famous climbers in the world. Uh, if you if you have Netflix, there's a documentary called Meru, M-E-R-U, that is blow you off the face of the earth, amazing. Um, very inspirational story about three climbers who tried and failed really similar to what we're talking about today, frankly. Uh, and then uh, I won't spoil it for you, but they do it again. All right. So, it, yeah. He, he's with Jimmy Chen too. That's his climbing partner. Yeah. Jimmy Chen who went off to, uh, he was the producer filmmaker for, for the free solo movie, which uh, I, I, I watched it, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't feel great for like an hour and a half in that movie. I thought like, this guy's gonna fall off. Yeah, yeah. You knew the outcome, but it was still scary. It's it's, it's just like that. You you know it's gonna happen, but then people still think that you know. All right, so let's get to some of the questions. We've got some really really sound questions. I'm gonna go to the first one. Uh, this is uh, my man David Zetz, uh, who asks when, and it really is thematic for what we've been talking about today on the interview here on Bunker Bash. Uh, when you decided to become a crazy person and climb the seven summits. What was the first action you took to start the process? Did you hire a coach? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks, David. And, uh, you know, I, I, one of the things that I've come up with, and this is one of the things I talk about, but, you know, again, this is as I was contemplating these different things when I, uh, when I was on these mountains and I was doing all this journal writing and really thinking back on what Don James, my former coach at the University of Washington, had given me. And that was this gift of really understanding the uh, pyramid of success and what it takes to be a champion. And I came up with my own acronym called Summits, and it's really the roadmap to life. And it can apply to anything. You're you're, you're building a fence, you're climbing a mountain, you're going to run in the marathon with uh, the Husky or the, the German Shepherd outfit on, you know, whatever you're going to do. And in that roadmap, there's always a beginning and there's an end. And, and really the beginning of that is this seed. And then as you spell out the, the different um, uh, letters, um, you start with your C, which is their idea, um, and then the U is really unleashing on that um, as you go through S U M M I T S, and unleashing is really you know starting to 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 put together um, that roadmap. So in my case, in answering your question, 
Um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know where to turn. But again, growing up in the great state of Washington, um, there were some some outfitters that I knew, and I picked up the phone. I was actually in Georgetown at a, 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 a hotel down there, Georgetown Inn, and I picked up the phone. And I called uh, this guy who had actually done the Seven Summits and guided some different people around the, the world, and I said, this is Mark. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've been going through, and this is um, – what I want to accomplish, how do I do it? And so this guy helped put together a plan. And that plan sta- started off with uh, going down to to Kilimanjaro. And that was really to start to understand, you know, could I handle altitude at 19,333 feet, which I've actually done twice now. But that was really the beginning of it. So again, you know, rather than just jump into it, you know, the really first step was uh, going from, okay, this is the plan, starting at the top, working all the way down the bottom, and then figuring out all the different things. And there's been a lot of figuring out things that I've had to do um, along the journey. Um, fueling, uh, myself, has been a big one. Uh, nutrition, which is part of fueling. Um, and then also, like, what to wear and how to sit up and down. And, and you know, we call that in the mountains self-care. If you don't have self-care, you literally implode. And I've seen it happen. And unfortunately, it happened to my tent mate um, from Antarctica last year uh, when he tried to climb uh, Mount Everest. He saw that big long line that was up there it was insane and he literally got to the very top raised his hand fell over and that was it oh man yeah i mean little things like taking care of your feet i mean when we were in the marines hiking 20 30 miles i mean that was like little things like socks you know so um super awesome let me get to the some of the other questions that we've got in here um thank you david for that question our next question i love this question donna thank you for that um question what's your best advice to your daughters and young people regarding this time we're in and by the way if you're watching uh via video later on we're we're filming this in about week two of the coronavirus lockdown so we're all kind of sheltering in place you know trying to figure out what to do next so what's your advice to that crowd well let me give you a shout out to donna because first of all donna has been one of my biggest supporters um, as I've been navigating uh, my journey, number one. Um, number two, she's a nurse and she's out there on the front lines battling, taking care of all these people with C-19 and, and going through all that craziness and exposing herself. Um, but answering her question, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm with my daughter, one of them uh, right now in Southern California, and it's just getting them and letting them know that all things will pass, Right. And also, it's another time for me of great connection, right, of being in the same room. I mean, most of the time we're talking about social distancing, but, um, you know, of, of, of talking with her, spending more time with her, um, understanding, like, what she's going through. Um, the daughter I'm with is, is my daughter named Amelia, and she had to stop short um, uh, the University of Arizona. And so what a big bummer. I mean, you can, this plays out in sports and so many seniors that were playing in the NCAA tournament of having to cut that short and come back home. You're now, you're not around uh, your friends. You're not going to school. And how do you navigate and how do you deal with that? And like, I keep telling her like, oh, it's just like when I'm on the mountain and bad things are happening. You just got to ride it out, ride the storm out and all good things will return. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was with my son who just turned 13 he and I were sitting at the dinner table about a week ago, and I just looked at him and I said, look, when you're 75 years old, you're going to be telling people that you lived during this time. This is how significant uh, this is for our culture. It's uh, truly, truly world-changing, and it will never, ever be the same. And there will be people who will simply react to everything that's going on, or there will be people who take action. And that's what this show is all about, uh, finding a way to flat out take action. I've got uh, one more question. I'm gonna um, drop here, Mark, and then, hang on, let me get rid of uh, that uh, uh, branding that's below there. Uh, I'm gonna throw one more question up and then uh, I'm gonna we're gonna do a little bit of a, a, of a wrap up. But first of all, I just wanna thank uh, you for watching. Uh, if you haven't clicked that like button, now would be a great time to do that. Uh, tomorrow is open Q&A Friday. It's also Focus Friday, so you're going to come with your big accountability item uh, that you're gonna share with the community uh, so that we can get next week done in the most positive fashion possible. Uh, Next week, by the way, is expert week. Uh, Day one is live streaming. Day two, social media strategies. Day three is podcasting. Day four is LinkedIn strategies. 
On day five is book writing, publishing, and author strategy. So I'm bringing in my favorite experts on each of those topics. So you definitely want to make sure that you tune in. Uh, if you are not subscribed to the channel, you are missing a lot. Okay. So uh, Mark, the last question we'll take for today is Barry Gamir, who says, what goals uh, are you trying or what goals are you aspiring uh, to accomplish uh, now? I know you've got Everest in front of you, but what else? My coaches used to always say, just take one game at a time. And, you know, that put us in a great position back in the day uh, to play in two Rose Bowls, an Orange Bowl, a couple of Aloha Bowls, a couple of playoff games. And, you know, truly that's the way I've approached life and just do the things that I can, I can, um, I can control today, uh, not tomorrow, or not five years from now. And so, again, my Everest aspirations got put on hold, and um, I'm taking a little bit of a reset, but all my energy and focus go 100% back on, on, on climbing that mountain. And that's not trivial. You know, that's not going to the gym and, and jumping on a Stairmaster. Um, that is literally um, going back to my home in Sun Valley, Idaho, and, and running up and down the mountain every single day, acclimating um, to, that, to that height, trying to build those red blood cells up and pushing myself beyond any place I've ever been, even when I was playing back in the NFL. Um, I have aspirations on Everest. You're gonna have to stay tuned uh, next year um, when I'm, I'm going up. Um, I have got a, a blog called Everest Blog, that, which is on my, my site, Mark Patterson, NFL, um, dot com, And, and uh, there's actually a, a Garmin tracker. And on that, on that tracker, um, you can actually see me going up and down the mountain. I was ready to activate it uh, this year. And, and obviously it got postponed, um, but I've got more things up my sleeve than just Everest uh, when, I'm, when I'm there. So you have to tune in. But, you know, outside of my day-to-day -day, um, responsibilities with Sports Illustrated and trying to be the best dad I possibly can and best person I possibly can on the planet um, to my daughters, um, you know, focused 100% on Mount Everest, the biggest, baddest boy on the block. <laughs> I read... Uh, into thin air when I was about 18 years old and decided um, that I thought ev climbing Everest was probably the coolest thing I've ever heard and that I probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> you know, so, I, I, there's another guy that I've climbed with too, Ed Veesters. And, uh, you know, Ed was part of the, he, he was not part of that team, but when I interviewed him, it, it was a teary moment yeah. um, talking to him that when, when uh, he was part of the rescue crew that went up there a day after and he was filming um, a, uh, an IMAX film with David Brazier's. And, uh, and so they went by all those guys and it was awful. And, you know, he drew a tear or two just mm. remembering what it was like to go take the top and come back down and sit next to his buddy, Rob Hall, and just reflect there in a moment as he was sitting there frozen in the snow. It was pretty crazy. That's right. Rob Hall was one of the guides up there. It's, it's, um, if you haven't read crack hours into thin air, it's really, really an amazing, uh, book. And he, he, he managed to be ex on that expedition that was one of the most tragic ones. It's just an incredible story. So, uh, Mark, first of all, thank you for being here. I'm going to ask you to bring us home with your final thoughts uh, in just a second. We're going to wrap up the show, and Mark and I will be here to hang out for a few minutes and just say hello to you on chat. If you're watching this via video, please do uh, subscribe and join us daily, Monday through Friday, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern, uh, for the Bunker Bash. Listen, this too shall pass. And at some point, we're all going to be out into the air again. Business is going to pick up as usual, and you're going to be better, faster, and stronger uh, because you decided to get yourself some training. And that's what this show is all about, uh, motivating you to get into a place uh, where you can help inspire people uh, to accomplish incredible things. And my guest today, Mark Pattison, is not only accomplished some incredible things, but he's about to in the future. So if you haven't taken the time to do that, uh, this go to his website. It's actually right below his name right now. It's Mark Pattison NFL. Uh, go check out what Mark is up to and certainly follow him on social media and also on his podcast. Mark, thanks for being here. I'd love to have you back uh, if you'll come back and take us home. What are your last thoughts before we wrap it up today? This is really simple. I say this to my daughters every single day that they run out the door. Um, and that is, it takes a little more to make a champion. Um, that's something I've been saying forever. And when you really break it down, that's really what it is. There's another saying too that I want to I want to throw out, and this will be my last one. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a simple step. Yeah. So anybody out there trying to figure out where you're at, just remember it takes a little more to make a champion. 
And the biggest thing you can do is take that first step out the door towards something that you're going to accomplish. And it's going to make you feel great and awesome and lead you to many other amazing things in your life. It's awesome, man. Thank you for that. So as we're wrapping up today, I have a simple question for you as you're watching uh, Mark and I, what's your next step? Uh, maybe you're going to launch a podcast or write a book, or maybe you're going to live stream, or maybe you want to build your social media presence or get a new customer or client. Maybe your business is completely transitioning right now and you're moving into what I'm calling the new expert economy, whatever that is. My challenge for you, my question for you is what's the next step? Tomorrow's show is our Focus Friday. That's when you have an opportunity to tell the world what you're going to focus on over the next week. And I encourage you to show up for tomorrow's show. It streams live right here on YouTube and also on Facebook. Uh, I'd love to have you here as a guest. Mark Pattison, you are the man, sir. Thanks for having, uh, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate you taking time. I know you are a busy man and um, it's awesome, man. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks everybody for showing up too. We're going to, Mark and I will stay here on chat for just a few minutes, but you guys are amazing. I love you and I like you and go conquer the world. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Hello, hello, hello.